Um, so hello, um, my name is Corey Moss. I uh, and do live and do and do indeed live near New York City these days. Um, came over to visit you wonderful people, uh, and uh, after a, a few days in Manchester, um, and I've had a great time. Belfast is great. Um, so uh, first and foremost, uh, I want to say that I am not a psychologist. This is a standard disclaimer, right? Um, there are, uh, as it is uh, still technically May, uh, it is Mental Health Month, um, which is great. There's a lot of attention being drawn to uh, the trials and tribulations that a lot of people will go through. Um, and uh, our industry, whatever our industry is, I guess, um, uh, is not to be uh, discluded from that. So um, I encourage all of you to um, you know, take this, not necessarily what I'm going to say, um, but uh, uh, you know, take this stuff seriously, mental health. Uh, your own health is very important. Um, so, uh, so with that going forward, um, uh, as she said, I've been doing this for web, uh, building websites for about 20 years. Um, uh, been specifically focused on WordPress for about eight my main product uh, is called uh, Kanban. Uh, from those of you going, what the heck is Kanban? Uh, the, if you're familiar with Trello, Trello is an example of a Kanban board. Um, and if you don't know what Trello is, come talk to me afterwards. Um, so what I wanted to talk about is, like I said, there's a lot of attention being drawn to um, some of the bigger issues, um, depression and uh, physical problems, and especially where a lot of us work remotely. There are issues with isolation, that kind of thing. Um, and well, I find obviously that stuff is very important. Um, for me, uh, I went through a real hard time uh, last year, but I didn't, for me, I didn't feel like I warranted, um, you know, the, um, the diagnosis, if you will, of, of depression. It wasn't that deep. I was still doing fine, happy with my dogs and my wife and that kind of thing. Um, and a friend of mine said, you know, but you've still been going through something. And, and so I kind of wanted to share that story with you um, just to draw attention to um, it doesn't have to be the darkest days uh, for there still to be a need for community and, and getting some help. So uh, in 2017, it was actually the first year I'd been working on Kanban for over a year. And it was the first year that I was a responsible business owner and sat down and wrote out the goals for the year. I'd never done that before. Usually I'd just flown by the seat of my pants. And for better or worse, I accomplished them by May. So that kind of left me going, okay, so now what do I do? And I felt actually really good about myself. I thought, you know, I'd gotten a lot done. So I decided to uh, look at, okay, so then what would be the next thing, right? And suddenly I'm back into my old patterns of flying by the seat of my pants. And the, the next thing that I'd had in mind was to rewrite my, uh, my plugin. So here's where I'll introduce sort of the first. There's going to be, there's going to be some takeaways here. There's going to be uh, little lessons that I've learned. Hopefully, you'll uh, uh, learn from my mistakes. Um, but lesson number one, don't go off the rails. Um, so uh, <laughs> think long and hard. Uh, if you find yourself uh, the type of person, anyway, who does make a plan, uh, the moment you suddenly sort of step sideways, uh, take a hard look at that. Um, and I realize that self-awareness is, is uh, very difficult, and I'll um, address that in a minute with um, some possible solutions. But anyway, so lesson number one, try not to go off the rails. Um, the next thing was I said, okay, I'm, I'm looking at this product, and uh, I really think that I need to rewrite it from scratch. Um, and uh, for those developers in the room, you'll understand lesson number two. Um, which is conventional wisdom in development is you do not ever write something from scratch because um, you're reintroducing all of the bugs, you're reintroducing all the problems, um, and it's a hard decision. I still think it's the right one. Um, but uh, lesson number two here is um, basically if, if, conventional, if there is conventional wisdom, if a lot of uh, you know, smarter, older people than you uh, have sort of laid down the law and said things like, don't. Right, rewrite your app from scratch, question it. <laughs> um, so that led me to uh, thinking hard about, okay, so what, um, what technology should I use? And, and last year, if, if you're a nerd like me, uh, and or a WordPress nerd, 
uh, going even deeper like I am, you know that there was this great debate about what should be sort of the next framework that gets JavaScript framework that gets introduced uh, into WordPress. And there was a lot of discussion around um, should it be React, should it be Vue. And I was already looking at um, some of the issues that had led me to wanting to do this rewrite um, would basically be solved uh, built it with, with the built-in technology of something like React. So I was already looking at React. Um, but it led me to, you know, this, these, this great internal struggle, this great internal debate of like, well, a couple of things. One is uh, there is this syndrome uh, called shiny object syndrome. Uh, if you're not familiar, uh, the joy is uh, inevitably you're working in the way that you know how to work and there's always a new framework, there's always a new technology, there's always a new app. Um, and it's always more exciting than whatever you're working on. Grass is always greener kind of thing. Um, so <clears throat> thankfully, at least in this case, I'm looking at this and I'm going, React at this point is being adopted by the WordPress community, is being debated highly, is being used by smarter, better developers than I am. Um, I, I think this is the right decision, but again, it leads to, it leads to a lot of insecurity. Um, the other thing is that I am, uh, uh, a developer for 20 years. I started this when there weren't uh, frameworks, right? And so I'm just used to uh, building a lot of things for, from scratch um, for myself. It also leads to a deeper understanding, right? But that's, that's this thing called not invented here syndrome, which is uh, any, uh, many developers suffer from, well, I didn't write it, so, so it's undoubtedly inferior um, because I'm smarter than everybody in the room. Generally not true. Um, but so I start to sort of end up in this mental cycle of what well, I think this is the right technology, but is this the right technology? I didn't write it. Um, the other thing that, that started to happen was I, I said, okay, well, I don't know React at all, and I'm basically under pressure to rewrite my product using this new technology, which means that when I finally uh, ship a product, ship, you know, that, that it has React built in, um, it's got to be great. <laughs> it's got to work, right? And so I don't have a lot of time uh, to ramp up, which inevitably leads to yet another syndrome that is common to uh, our uh, community, which is called imposter syndrome, right? Where basically it's a nice, na nice way to say insecurity. We all uh, feel like we aren't adequate, that we don't uh, know, in fact, as much as we do, because honestly, um, we are constantly bombarded with, and this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but um, experts who clearly come across, uh, you know, teaching us new things and whatnot, and so leaves you going, well, I don't, I don't know as much as this guy or gal, um, you know, am I good enough? So uh, just to put a cap on the first half of this story, um, basically while I'm sitting there kind of learning React, kind of insecure about whether I should build React, kind of insecure about, well, if I build it in React, is this going to actually do what I need it to do and, and, um, and all that kind of stuff. I, of course, basically stopped working on the product because I don't want to keep developing it if I'm going to rewrite it. So that starts to in introduce um, feelings of depression and anxiety. Well, I should be doing these other things, but I'm not doing these other things. Where are my priorities? Um, I'm also watching other businesses succeed. You know, um, everybody uh, blogs about how great they're doing, and you go to a meetup and and you talk to people and and how are, how's your company doing? Oh, we're killing it. It's the best year ever. Because what else are they going to say, right? Um, but so now I'm starting to get a little jealous, and basically all these emotions are just running through my head, running through my head. And this is where I basically just froze in place uh, for a few months where I just couldn't get out of my, my own way. I couldn't, I couldn't decide, nothing quite felt right. So we'll pause there. I'll leave you, that's, that's where a boy loses girl, right? Or developer loses Wi-Fi password or whatever it is. Um, so what, what I, thankfully, uh, at that point, you know, I, I could pick my head up and there were at least a few things that I had done right because I have been doing this for a long time. Uh, one is I had been working alone for a year and a half and realized that I needed help. Um, 
specifically with marketing, but also just a sounding board. So I have basically uh, am now collaborating with Jake, who's sitting there. I'm calling him out. The other handsome gentleman in the uh, Kanban shirt. Um, but having somebody else, any other voice, and this doesn't have to be a coworker or colleague, it could be a friend, it could be a loved one, um, just having somebody who's willing to listen makes all the difference. I'd also uh, just previously joined, um, uh, there's a, an online community called Post Status, which is kind of meant for um, people focused on business in the context of WordPress. Um, but there are, there are WordPress forums, there are Facebook groups, um, and again, it doesn't have to be WordPress. That just happens to be the world that I revolve in. Um, but again, having these people and watching these conversations go by and seeing that at least once in a while, I wasn't the only one um, chiming in and saying, hey, I'm having a hard day, or I'm not sure about you know, this technical decision, or um, that kind of thing. The other thing that came out of those communities was I started what's called, um, or joined what's called a mastermind group. Um, it, Really, really handy. I encourage everybody to start one. Um, you know, free and easy. Basically, you find a few like-minded individuals kind of pursuing the same goals in life and business um, and do a once-a-week call. Um, and there, there's, you know, I won't go into this, but there's lots of different ways to run it. The simplest one just being each of you take 15 minutes to kind of talk about the problems that you're having. Um, and everybody helps brainstorm solutions and then um, there's an, a nice element of accountability. What are you going to do by next week? And then the next week you say, I did it or I didn't, and the, your group very nicely says, why? Um, or why not? <laughs> um, but it helps keep you moving forward and it helps, it's again, just voice of reason or uh, one of my favorite phrases, sanity check, right? Kind of to just make sure you're on the right track. The other thing is um, I see a therapist and I'm willing to admit it. Um, just somebody that I talk to once a week. Sometimes we talk about uh, you know, uh, personal problems or my frustration with my dogs or um, you know, uh, road rage when I yell at somebody because they cut me off. Sometimes I talk about business, my career, all that kind of stuff. Um, and this doesn't have to be a lay down on the bed and tell me about your mother kind of thing, um, but a weekly check-in, again, with an objective voice. Somebody who is literally paid to be honest with you makes all the difference. Um, the last thing, no, not the last thing, the next thing. Um, during this whole process, something was wrong. And this is where, again, I'll say self-awareness is really, really tough. Um, but again, having voices coming in from the outside that can sometimes enable your self-awareness or be your self-awareness, which makes no sense at all, but hopefully you understand the point I'm trying to make. Um, my gut just told me that there's something about this process was wrong, that I dug a hole um, and, it, and it wasn't the right place to be. So I kept questioning. Um, the other thing is I'm a bit of a productivity nerd and I've, I've tried to develop pretty good habits over time. Um, and so understanding the power of something as simple as making a list and going, okay, sorry, what was that again? Oh, I'm done. Oh, shoot, okay. Fast forward. Uh, well, that's most of the good stuff anyway. These are the solutions. Um, mastermind group, lots of peers. Um, people around you. So the, the punchline or the in, inverted punchline to this story is basically in my mastermind group I had a gentleman tell me, you know, why are you using React? And I had a canned answer that I would told everybody over and over again. Um, but dumb luck, the plumber rang my doorbell at that, at that moment and I had to go let him in to fix my hot water heater that was flooding my basement. Um, and he said, uh, and so I didn't get a chance to give my uh, my standard answer. And so I walked around for the rest of the day going, why react? Why react? And basically it came down to, wait, no, this isn't the right answer. And I was kind of able to walk back through all of these decisions that I'd made and all these syndromes that I'd experienced and said, uh, you know, this isn't the right decision. And suddenly a lot of other things started to make sense. Um, so a couple of other quick things that I'll leave you with. Um, is, is constantly, you know, spend a little time every week looking at your priorities, you know, stay at the 10,000 foot level, um, and also look at ways to, to reframe your thinking. Ask your friends or, or loved ones or, or, you know, your mastermind group to sort of say things back to you um, and see if it makes sense and see if, if they can say it in a way and with a straight face um, so that you, in fact, know that it is the right thing. Um, so the good, the good news at the end of all this is uh, I'm 
solidly halfway through rewriting it exactly the way I know um, and feeling much better about uh, my day to day. Thank you very much.